Today on the Game Marks Podcast, we play WWE WrestleFest, the mobile game from 2012. Will we play it forever? Woo! Or future endeavor? You're fired! We also celebrate the release of Retromania Wrestling as we are joined by the voice of the game, Ian Riccoboni. All that, plus gaming news, an update on GMP64, and Clash at the Feast. Plug in, put on those nostalgia goggles, because this week's Game Marks podcast starts now. And now, the Game Marks! Welcome to the Game Marks podcast, presented by the Major Pod Network. I'm the man they call... Uh, the man that's heading to King of the Ring, Johnny Clash. I can't believe you booked yourself in the King of the Ring. Either way, I am the man of a thousand and one nicknames this week, being known as Fisual Chocolate, <laughs> George Feast. I'm so glad you don't tell me these nicknames before you... <laughs> Before we're on the pod. I need the authentic reactions. (laughs) This week, we are playing WWE WrestleFest. Now, not the WWF WrestleFest, the beloved arcade cabinet. WWE WrestleFest, the re-release from 2012, the iOS game. But as always, we love to hear from you guys. So please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and make sure to subscribe and rate this podcast wherever you choose to listen and join the conversation on social media at... Game Marks Pod and on Discord at GameMarksPod.com slash Discord. George. I thought you were going to do that whole thing in one breath. I was about to be super impressed. Yeah, no, I almost passed out there, but how you doing this week, buddy? <laughs> I was just like, he's not breathing. He's not breathing. He's not taking your breath. He's okay. He's going down. Nope, he took a breath. All right, we're good. I, I, uh, I learned how to do that from Justin Summers because if you listen to Wrestling Cheers, he just, go, he just, he just goes off in like one giant plug. It's insane. Hey, you know what? You got to work on that. Uh, take take big breaths before, and then you can just belt it all out. You'd be good. Ooh, I was doing my Peloton uh, breathing exercise. There you go. But uh, but Johnny, how are you this week, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Last week we played WWF WrestleMania Challenge. Um, I played it forever. You futured endeavored. I still really appreciate this game. I watched back our Clash at the Feast. I. Yeah, I want to play this game a little bit more. You know, there's the roster limitations, but for a game this old, I think it was awesome. Yeah, I still, still not liking it. Just the 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 game itself was good. The the tilt of the ring and then the tilt of the D pad that just it kind of ruined the whole experience for me. I get it. Yeah, I get it. But um, <laughs> well, you're going to love this week's game. But we have the streamer spotlight for the month of February. This is the last week where we will be highlighting Dom Odinson. That's D-O-M-O-D-I-N-S-O-N. So go give him a follow before next week when we have someone new. Oh, yeah. Now, speaking of Twitch and the streamer spotlight, on the Game Marks podcast channel... When we hit 200 followers, we will be releasing the Bret Hart video game retrospect episode. We are currently at 158 followers each week. We climb a little bit. I'm very excited. Make us do it. We want to Please. do this episode. I I want to do this just so we could present Bret Hart and all of his video game glory, but then we can move on to someone else and we could just keep doing these. These are awesome. I've got I an idea these. for... For who I might want to do next. Okay, me too, me too. Right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, right. we'll figure it out. Maybe, maybe we'll flip a coin and see who gets the pick. But um, speaking of coin flips, that's how we uh, we set up the first picks for GMP64. But GMP64 released episode three last week. And, uh, you know, ratings were a little low that week because the, the current hardcore champion wasn't on that episode but um who's who's the hardcore champion again uh that'd be the man of a thousand and one nicknames george feast oh okay got it so you booked yourself in that role got it you're you're the first champion of gmp64 got it uh anyway but, uh, we had it i would say shut no, up no 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 who's who's in the king of the ring finals i earned that <laughs> Ear- earned it I, I regardless think I'm siding, i think i'm siding with stephen mcmahon on this one 
Oh, regardless, we had a hell of an episode. We had Stephanie McMahon confronting Johnny Clash, bringing in her associate X-Pac to put him through a table. We had the major brothers, Brian Myers and Matt Cardona, debut against JBL and Big Money Matt Hardy, a brand new tag team. Oh, we that's saw- not it, though. That's not it. The, the star, the main event. And I'm not talking about Hulk Hogan. I'm talking about Smart Mark Sterling. This was a dream match. I don't know if anyone... For anyone but him, <laughs> but Smart Mark <laughs> Sterling defeated Hollywood Hulk Hogan. A little and, help, uh, little asterisks on there. A little help from Grammar Cop. Yeah. Plus, we saw the debut of Finn Balor and Jeff Hardy. Guys, this is awesome. I love doing it. You could see how much we love doing it if you just watch one episode. Check it out on our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Podcast. If you don't know what we're talking about, just Head on over to GameMarksPod.com slash GMP64. We lay it all out there for you. And next week's the Go Home Show, Episode 4, before we have King of the Ring on February 28th. That's on Twitch, not YouTube. All I know is that I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that Johnny Clash does not become the first world champion. So I actually looked at the bracket, and I'm up against The Rock, who's like unbeatable in this game. So it's, it's not looking good. Oh, I like that. I like the sound of that. But with that, George, what do you say we head on over to some gaming news? I'm ready. Are you looking to get a better grip on life? How about your video games? Well, VGF Gamers are the largest silicone gaming brand in the USA. They have a variety of different and unique skins for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One controllers and consoles. Check out their products at VGFGamers.com and use code GAMEMARKS to receive 15% off of your order at checkout. That's G-A-M-E-M-A-R-K-S at checkout. VGF Gamers. Better grip, better style. It looks like Thanos could be making a return to Fortnite at some point in the near future. While by no means a guarantee, new information tied to Fortnite has recently come about that may tease the arrival of the Mad Titan. Discovered recently in the code of Fortnite, one data miner has found that a new animation for an XL male character skin has recently been added to the game. The way in which this ties back to Thanos is because the popular Marvel villain has previously been the only character in the history of Fortnite that has ever been listed as an XL skin in the game's code. The fact that an XL skin of some sort has appeared in the code again suggests that Thanos could be returning. During last week's Nintendo Direct presentation, Mario Golf Super Rush was revealed exclusively for the Nintendo Switch. The upcoming golf game is the latest in the Mario Sports series on Switch, following 2018's Mario's Tennis Aces. Since the game's release, fans have been clamoring for a new Mario Golf, and this one is slated to release in the next few months. Mario Tennis Aces has become one of the best-selling games on the Switch hardware, so it seems like a safe bet that the next Mario Sports entry will also be a big success. And that's all the gaming news we have this week. Check back next week. Alright, now, in addition to everything that we just talked, that Johnny just talked about... As we are recording this, it is the final day of BlizzCon. So, for those of you who don't know, Blizzard Entertainment, game uh, the company behind such games as World of Warcraft, Diablo, Overwatch. Um, Big, big event. Happens every year. This is really where they make their announcements of the games that are coming out for their upcoming year and, you know, where they reveal the games that are coming out in the future. New IPs or, or... what have you. But the big, big discussion that's happening right now, and Johnny, I, I know that this is going to sound like another language to you. Diablo 2 is getting... So you don't think I ever dabbled in Diablo? No, no, no. I think you did. I just don't think you're as... like The sentence that I'm about to say is probably not going to be as exciting for you as it is for me. Okay. Diablo 2, after decades is getting a remaster and a re-release. So you have Diablo 2 Resurrection, I believe is what it's being called. And if you're not a little bit excited about that, or I'm what excited. that means for, for the potential, um, you know, for those of you who have played uh, Diablo 3, kind of a letdown. 
a lot of people played it and then kind of trailed off, um, saying that they wanted a lot of the gameplay from Diablo 2. So this coming back, they released a comparison video, pretty much, of Diablo 2 to the Diablo 2 uh, Resurrected. And it is chef's kiss beautiful. Mwah. Love it. Perfect. Cannot wait to play it. This is a day one buy for me. Like, without question. Yeah, so it could also be for me, because, George, I'm running on a gaming PC right now. Oh, man, I cannot believe that this is a conversation that we're having right now, talking about Diablo 2 getting a a remaster, and the fact that Johnny's going to be able to play it because he has a gaming PC. We really are living in the future now. I haven't pushed it too much yet, but I've been playing Warzone on it, and it's life-changing compared to PS4 by far. Oh, I'm so I'm so happy, so happy to hear this. But I've been going back and playing like Age of Empires two. I got Roller Coaster Tycoon. I'm I gotta now get into the big boys like Diablo. I say you've got you've got what twenty years of <laughs> computer gaming to catch up on. Yeah, I saw on Steam there's like Toilet Simulator, <laughs> so maybe we'll maybe we'll stream that. There's a, a a game on Steam that hurts my brain in such a way that I actually can't put it into words. You can buy a game on Steam that is PC Building Simulator. <laughs> so you can buy a game on your computer, which you can make computers. Like, that is too many layers of inception for me. Yeah, what? What? Why would anyone want to do that? I, that, that's, that's not a day one buy for me. No. Um, but with that, why don't we head on over to our favorite section, the question of the week. Oh, baby. Ooh, yeah. Game Marks, uh huh? We are here to tell you that the Game Marks podcast is on Pro Wrestling Tees and T Public, uh huh? But the cream will always rise to the top. Now, there are two ways to shop Pro Wrestling slash Game Marks Pod or T Public.com slash user slash Game Marks Pod. Because you know the Game Marks podcast is the cream of the crap, huh? So head on over today and bow down to the kingdom of the madness. Your mustache is crooked, Marks. <laughs> Johnny Boy, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Game Marks Pod. I need it. So, full disclosure. The first three shirts that I bought from our Pro Wrestling Tea store, I didn't get the soft shirt. And it was <gasps> a mistake. So with the last sale that ran, I went on and I bought our glitch in the system shirt, which is that glitchy GMP logo on the yeah, soft goods shirt. One... That is, and I'm not just tooting my own horn because I designed it. That's a nice looking shirt, and it feels even better when you get it on the soft goods, uh, on the soft goods upgraded shirt. Uh, it's my my new favorite shirt. I'm going to be wearing it all the time. Now I already own all of ours, so I went with friend of the pot. I bought the Acclaims new T-shirt. Mm. But if you buy a T-shirt from our Pro Wrestling Tea Store at prowrestlingtees.com slash GameMarksPod, this is the last week where you will receive a phone call from the Game Marks. Now, who doesn't want that? No, we have, uh, we have some we have to still fulfill, and I think next week we'll be getting together, and I think that's a good time to do it, because you don't know who might be lurking around. I'm very, very excited for that. But, George, tell us about the question of the week. All right, so this is the new question of the week where you submit your questions and then we pick it and we answer it and then we propose the same question to everyone else. And you can ask the question, you can answer the question on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. Now, last week, Chris Dust 310 absolutely stumped me. Uh, Johnny had a very good answer. I struggled a bit because that's a long list so chris's question was has there ever been a wrestler that should have been in a wrestling game but wasn't and now before you read 
the answer. This was we interpreted this a different way. Like I said, oh, Shane Douglas has only been in one game. Oh, I love Shane Douglas. Um, Zach Gowan's never been in a game. You said Repo Man or like the Goon. But I think the way that this was interpreted by some people makes a little more sense. So Will is balling says, so I think I'm interpreting this differently than you guys did rather than looking for someone who wasn't in any game. I'm thinking of wrestlers who should have been in a specific game but weren't. And that makes it easy because Macho Man should have been in WWF WrestleFest and he absolutely should have been in WWE Legends of WrestleMania. So if we look at it a little differently, it's a completely different question. Yeah, that is that is a different kind of question. Yeah, I don't think we have to go back and answer it again because <laughs> it stumped us last time. But just, uh, yeah, I think that's a good way of looking at it. And Macho Man obviously is the easy answer there. Yeah, that's 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 a very uh, very easy answer. And honestly, this is why I like the fact that we post the questions on our social media because now everyone can be like, hey. You know, this was not really how I heard the question, and now it's it almost like it's almost like this question was two questions in one, which is is great. Yeah. But now we're on to this week's question, and obviously, when we pick your question, you get a Game Marks Podcast prize pack. And this week's question comes from Frank Blackmore at F A Blackmore on Instagram, and his question is: What non wrestling characters or people would you make in your wrestling game? He says that he always used to make Bruce Lee. Ooh, I like this. Now, one. Frank, DM us on any uh, your your choice of social media to claim your prize. But but Johnny, I'm gonna let you kick things off this week. What uh, non wrestling characters did you make? So I don't know if it counts, but I used to make like Conor McGregor, like, as you've seen in like Fire Pro. But I used to make Shaq in like every game. I don't know why. I just feel like they always had like his pieces to make him plus he always had like a hand in wrestling so it was kind of just cool to have him i'd basically copy and paste like the undertaker's moveset and just make Shaq. um man i don't know i don't know who else i think that's my answer i did one year make like two or three islanders in one of the old smackdown versus raw games when you could (laughs) actually had like the logo creator and i would make the jersey and put them on them but i don't know if i ever even played with them i think i just made them just to make them what about you uh, so I had, as soon as I saw this question, I had one character immediately popped into my head. Um, I'm a big Spider-Man fan. Mm. And back in the day, uh, I believe it's like in, in SmackDown vs. Raw, like 2010 or something like that. Um, back when you could upload and download other creative wrestlers, I saw that someone had made Spider-Man. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'm going to try to make other people. So I downloaded that that person spider-man and then i tried to make venom and carnage and uh like doc ock and i just tried to make it so that i had enough people to do like a six-man battle royal or like (laughs) some insane handicap match of a bunch of people versus spider-man i've always tried to make the ninja turtles like you could get the green in some games some games don't let you change like that color like that but it would just always look like a person in a costume, so it was always stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, as long as I've I, as they've had it in the game, you know, like the the crying baby head. Yes, that's been in like every wrestling game that <laughs> WWE's made for like the last like fifteen years. I've always wanted to make like the giant crying baby character, but I've never I never had because I just thought like every match would be weird. Yeah. Oh yeah, super weird. But that that was a good question. Yeah, I like that question. That was a very good question, but. Up next, it is now time for us to for us. It is now time for us to take our hashtag deep dive. Let's do it. Are you sick of drinking the same old boring coffee with the same old boring flavors? Well, Marks, it's time for you to check out Bones Coffee Company. Bones Coffee isn't just a drink that wakes you up in the morning. It's a full flavor experience. Small batch roasts that are made to order so that every order is guaranteed to be fresh unbelievable all natural flavors in every single bag some of our favorites are bluesberry paradise pie and chocolate raspberry but if you're not into the flavored coffees they've got their single origin series featuring coffee beans from the greatest coffee growing regions in the world visit gamemarkspod.com coffee to place your order and try the world's freshest small batch coffee Ch- 
John, John, John. We go on every week about how amazing Bones Coffee is. And I think they've kind of pushed that a little farther because for the last week or two, I think, every order that you placed, you were given a sampler of a mystery flavor. And now that mystery flavor has been revealed. Holy cannoli. Going to make you a coffee you can't refuse. I'm going to tell you something. I don't think I've ever been more excited to have a flavor of coffee than this. Uh, I love cannolis and I love coffee. And now I can have that in one glorious com- combination. And I just, the, everything is perfect about this. Yeah, I'm about to place my order. But you too can place your order on GameMarksPod.com slash coffee. But George... WWE WrestleFest for the iOS Take Us Through It. All right. So like John said, this is WWE WrestleFest. This is a modernized, updated version of the classic WWF WrestleFest for iOS. It was released February 21st in 2012 for the iOS, developed by Seed Studio, published by THQ. And... This was only available on the iOS, and it is very, very difficult to find. Um, full disclosure, we we lucked out. <laughs> John actually, the combination of luck here, John actually had this installed on an old iPod. iPod Touch, baby. Remember those? iPod Touch. Um, also, for those of you who may have downloaded it on a old iPod Touch, maybe go and revisit that. Uh, but this game has I, I i don't even like you just hear the name and you're like oh this is this is going to be awesome like if you know what wrestlefest is and then you hear that there's a new version with an updated roster this is this is great and like this roster is massive for an ios game like this is this is so much bigger than the original wrestlefest roster but taking a step back going into the game types that you have been a while i feel like since we've been able to say this you've got your exhibition game modes hey. you have your one-on-one steel cage match and a tag team match then you've also got your road to wrestlemania where you play through a series of matches and try to win uh a, a variety of wwe titles you have your royal rumble which is Exactly what you would expect. You pick your wrestler and you battle through the other ros- the rest of the roster to, to try to make your uh, your shot at WrestleMania. You have Saturday night's main event tournament where you can pick two wrestlers, you form a tag team, and then you fight through a series of tag matches. Now, uh, they really uh, they stuck true to form here with the original WrestleFest. With the game types, they just added the steel cage match in here and the road to WrestleMania. Now, the big difference between... This and the original Retro uh, WrestleFest is that this had online play, which is cool because you had all the experience of WWF WrestleFest, now with an updated roster, on your phone. And you could play against other people who also downloaded this game, which is cool. Can you imagine, you know, as a kid being in the arcade, standing in front of the WrestleFest, the original WrestleFest arcade cabinet, and being able to battle with anybody who also happened to be in front of the cabinet at that time? That's... That's awesome. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Now, true to form, paying homage to the original. This has a uh, two-button attack, an energy bar, simple grapple system, exactly what you expected to to find in the original WrestleFest. Um, you know, it's got that... I, I guess we're, we've been referring to it as like proximity grapple system where, you know, once you get close enough to your uh, opponent... You just lock up and you you smash buttons till you get, I guess in this case you're just smashing your phone screen. But yeah, you tap a button until <laughs> until you perform a move. We don't advise you do that. Yes, uh, we are not responsible for anyone who breaks a keyboard or a uh, an iPod Touch. That's uh, we're not responsible for that. Now, similar to uh, you know most other games uh, here. When your opponent's health is below a certain threshold, a signature move can be utilized. And in some cases, the signature moves are right. And in some cases, the signature moves are wrong. 
Um, the one that comes to mind is that it seems like Boss Man's signature move, you would think would be like the Boss Man Slam. Uh, in this game, it's a fall away slam? Yeah, that's... I don't know. That, that's why I want to compare the two right now. I want to compare the old game to the new game with your thoughts on just the overall, does it work? Because I... As John Cena, he does the five knuckle shuffle. It's just a really small, weird stepped animation of him doing it into the attitude adjustment. But like you said, some of them are just weird where it shouldn't be the fall away slam. Like, did they put that much into like the DLC per se for this game? I mean, so I'm trying to like the first thing that comes to mind about things that they maybe missed the mark on here is that you look at like the first thing you see when you start a match is four wrestlers or, or you see you're, the, the wrestler sitting in the ring. If it's a tag match, it's four wrestlers, but you see, you hear Justin Roberts voice <laughs> and then you look at the person that's a, the ring announcer and it looks nothing like Justin. Like it's not even close. No, they couldn't pay him to be in the game, I guess. Like, every other wrestler looks like themselves, and if you are a fan of wrestling, you know who Justin Roberts is. And he's in this game, you hear his voice, and it just looks nothing like him at all. Like, it, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand. A, a major change, again, that I, I had noticed is that tattoos are present, but they're... Just scribbles? Just like... <laughs> blurred blobs on people yeah. like uh well you know you have to think this was on like really a qu- like a two inch screen yeah so I, I guess- mean aside from that though wrestlers do look like themselves like stone cold looks like stone cold um boss man looks like boss man uh you know and and there's there's a lot of detail that went into the characters but like i mentioned there's some parts of it that are just like weird blobs on people yeah. for some reason <laughs> and i see like if you compare this game side by side they did do the same type of entrance they did do the same type of like ring introductions the same animations for like the pressing the button um on the screen where it they tried but i don't know if it all worked i think it's the animation style that throws me off how it's not the same as the original WrestleFest, like they tried to update it when they didn't need to update it. Where I'm going to put over Retromania Wrestling here, where they kept it true to form with the small sprite images, and it looks pretty much identical to how WrestleFest was. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I, I get you, they're trying to make like an updated version of it, but going back to, to what we were talking about a little while ago with like the, the wrestlers and their signature moves, you know, um, Del Rio's in the game. He does the cross arm breaker. It looks great. Boss Man does a fall away slam. You know, which you know he he may have done, but that's not the move that you associate with the Boss Man, right? Um, you know, the, the, like you said about uh, about uh, John Cena and, and the five knuckle shuffle. Like all of the signature moves are in there. Some of them just kind of miss the mark in terms of like it's not what you would hope i guess but part like, of us also might be expecting too much from an ios game in 2012 game, compared yeah. to what was on a console that we were used to yeah now uh you know i i want to talk more about the the actual game in terms of Signature moves and stuff, but I feel like we can't keep jumping ahead to that without talking about the roster itself. So, do you wanna you wanna take us through this roster? Yes, but before we do, let's hear a word from our sponsors. And we are back. How was that? Was that is that a little better? I, I'm not, that was good. I'm not going to try to... I like that. So your base roster for this game consists of Jake the Snake Roberts, John Cena, Rey Mysterio, The Rock, Randy Orton, Macho Man Randy Savage, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and The Undertaker. Now, there's also 30 DLC wrestlers here where we have Alberto Del Rio, Animal, Batista, Big Boss Man, Big Show, Cody Rhodes, Christian, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Dolph Ziggler, Dusty Rhodes, Edge, Eddie Guerrero, Hawk, 
Kane, Kevin Nash, Kofi Kingston, Mark Henry, The Miz, Mr. Perfect, R-Truth, Roddy Piper, Sergeant Slaughter, Shawn Michaels, Sheamus, Sin Cara, Ted DiBiase, Triple H, Yokozuna, and friend of the pod, Zack Ryder. Now, George, you want to take us through the arenas in this game? Yeah, sure. So your arenas, your base arenas are SmackDown, WrestleMania, Raw, the Royal Rumble, and Saturday Night's main event. Your DLC arenas are the quote-unquote old Survivor Series, WrestleMania 27, Old School Raw, Old School SmackDown, and Old School SummerSlam. All right, now let's take a look at the actual character models here, because we already mentioned they're not the small little 8-bit characters. They're actually like, I almost want to say like vectored out, like renders, like cartoon looking. They look cell shaded is the word that I would use. Cell shaded, yes. Um, They don't look bad by any means. I have an issue with the crowd itself because the proportions are just super weird. It looks like it's a mixture of like adults and children, but the kids are just like smaller versions of the adults and they're just repeated a million times on the screen (laughs) and they just slide back and forth and do these weird animations while you're like entering the ring and such but it is cool to see like like in WrestleFest the original you had kind of like the generic WWF like a Titantron stage setup it is cool to see like the Raw setup the Smackdown setup and all the pay-per-views as well but one thing they did keep true to form here is the in-between with Mean Gene, where he breaks down the match. Yeah, and you know, that's that's a cool feature because it is it is truly like a throwback to the original uh, WrestleFest. And, you know, I'm going to say something right now, and I feel like I'm going to get some flack for it. Being that this is a mobile game... It is a mobile game. <laughs> presentation and... I, I'm not really sure how to say this. Like, it's a mobile game. It's on your phone. I feel like they did a good job of making things look nice and true to how it looks while making it its own IP, if that makes sense. Like, it's it's a play on the old WrestleFest, but it's got this modern touch and feel. Now, whether that's for better or worse... That leaves to be, you know, that's up to you and how you feel about this game. We'll offer up our opinions later on. But, you know, for for what it's worth, they took a game and made it a modern take on it, which is, I don't know, fun. It's, 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 it's you know, it's, it's nostalgia at, at the purest form. Yeah, they kept, like, the ring the same way, and they used that old-school WWE version of the WWF logo, which is cool. I just feel like maybe it's the colors in the game and the screen size. It's Everything's just jam-packed, and it's, like, hard to – almost hard to look at because there's just so much going on on the screen. And I think if they took that logo off of, like, the ring canvas, it would make so much of a difference. But also, like, the health meters are – ginormous they don't need that big of a health meter on a mobile game plus i always hated this i know it's we're in the touch screen era now there's no more buttons on phones but i hate that like virtual joystick and virtual button because i always end up like floating off the screen and then i'm not pressing anything because i'm getting like so into (laughs) a game like i've had like call of duties maddens all that on mobile devices and i just don't play them because they're impossible yeah, I mean, this uh, that's a very good point that you make. It it feels like, you know, I'm, I'm going to use a uh, a questionable analogy here. It's uh it's 10 pounds of shit in a 5 pound bag. You know, yes. a, a phone screen <laughs> yeah. is only so big. And, you know, maybe I feel like an easy solution uh, you know, looking back at the Mean Gene uh post-match recap. You see how that that crowd in the background kind of has like a, a, a single tone over it yes. and then it fades to color. Like just like a slightly duller, maybe a, like a darker tint on the crowd maybe brings more of the focus to the ring so that you're more immersed in what's happening in the ring and less like, wow, there's just so – it's like an assault on your eyes just looking at this. There's just so many colors. Everything is so bright like, you know – Having if you have Macho Man and John Cena and Jake the Snake uh in a match, it's 
uh, we'll throw Rey Mysterio in there too. You've got oranges and yellows and reds and, you know, bright whites. Like it, it's just, it's too many colors. And then you put all of that with the bright ring ropes. Or if you're in like the big blue cage with the crowd, with the giant health bar, like oh. it's just, there's just so much happening on the screen all at once, all the time. Like not only that. They added a referee in the middle of all of this. So they just added <laughs> another character in the middle of the chaos. So you could have and a Royal the on-screen Rumble. screen buttons too. Yeah, the on-screen buttons, the joystick, the health meter, the time, a pause button. Like if you're in a Royal Rumble, there's multiple people and now you have a referee also. Yeah, I just... Visually, this... It works. It just... Like, separately, everything looks great. And I think, I almost feel like that's how they designed it. They were like, okay, nice big red health bar. That looks good. It, it's very clear that it's your health bar. Cool. Each sprite looks great. Each <laughs> each part of the ring looks great. But when they put everything together, I don't really think they took stock of what everything looks like at once. Now, I want everyone listening to look at what, if you don't understand what we're talking about, look at the steel cage match. I almost want to say that this match looks the best out of all of them because the camera angle is a little bit higher and you do have like a half shading over the crowd. So other than the actual cage and on the referee and a lot going on, I feel like this angle plus that crowd is the best version you're going to get of this game. Yeah, and the health bars are small, but what is, I feel like the last couple of games that we've played, why are the clocks so Big. Like, who, why do you need to see the time that big in a match? I'm going to say this. Why do you need a time limit in a match? I get if you're in, like, a story mode and you maybe want to not spend forever in a match because, you know, you want to run through it. But an exhibition match, like me and you, we've made the mistake before of leaving a time limit on, but we go head-to-head every week. We know, you know, like, we feel each other out. We know how to play these games. We don't need a time limit. I don't want it there. I never want a time limit. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's just something, I feel like the last couple of games, like the last couple of weeks, or maybe it's just something that we've, that's been there all along, but now that we're 80 episodes in, that it's just something that is uh, like bothering me more. But for some reason, just the clocks and time being that big, it just it feels like it's a, a, a needless detail. I agree. Now let's jump over. Obviously, there's no like artwork here because this was only an iOS game, but I want to talk about the WrestleFest logo quick. They did a quick little update. It almost reminds me of like a Crush Hour logo, but it's very, very WWE 2012 where I feel like they were just like, hey, you know what? Let's just make everything shiny. Yeah, yeah. I I 100% agree with that. And this may be one of the few times because there's only so many uh, mobile wrestling games where we'll actually get to talk about an icon. So the icon for the game itself is actually kind of cool. Um it frames the WWE logo almost like it's on an arcade machine. So you've got the joystick, the two buttons, and the screen. So it, it makes it look like you're looking at the icon through an arcade cabinet, which is interesting. I like it. It's fun. It, it's, yeah, it's, just a, it's a nice treatment for an icon. And, you know, this is, I think, the first or second time that we've ever actually been able to talk about an icon for, yeah. <laughs> for a game. Um, um, it almost reminds but, me of the original, I know you're an Android guy, but the original YouTube logo on the iPhone and like iPods and all that was like a TV set. And it reminds me oh, of that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know I know what that looks like. But, you know, the buzz behind this game and, and, and the, I guess, the demand for this game actually caused WWE to make a press release when this game was being developed. So uh, I was thinking that maybe we could talk a little bit about that, Johnny. Yeah, because this was uh, this was a big deal, I think, in 2012. Like people actually wanted like a new WrestleFest, and this is what they got. Now, <laughs> people still after this game still wanted a new WrestleFest, and guess what? This week we're getting one. But <laughs> what do you say? Want to take? Uh, Want to split these up? Take them bullet for bullet. Yeah, sure. So. The first bullet point from the WWE press release says, You said, bring it back. And today, THQ makes your request a reality. Announcing the release of WWE WrestleFest, a faithfully recreated 2D experience for the iPod Touch, iPhone, and iPad, based on the well-known WWE arcade game made popular in the early 1990s. 
faithfully recreated whew, faithfully faithfully recreated in line with the classic arcade experience wwe wrestlefest will provide players with a notable roster of current wwe superstars and popular wwe legends they will explore arcade style wwe action across a variety of match types including royal rumble tag team gauntlet and steel cage while competing in a number of renowned arenas like Raw, SmackDown, WrestleMania, and Saturday Night's main event. The Road to WrestleMania progression style mode will encourage players to select the WWE superstar or legend and compete in a series of challenges to win five different WWE championships, while wireless connectivity through Apple Game Center will enable them to issue multiplayer challenges. WWE WrestleFest will also update the gameplay experiences Following launch with the release of 30 additional WWE superstars and WWE legends, as well as new arenas, through an extensive DLC program. All right, I, I felt like we were just in like English class where we were going through the book and like we had to call on someone to say the next paragraph. Yeah, I mean, so here's <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, I wanna I wanna move on from this right now because I want to come back to this. When we offer up our rating. So that was the press release that WWE released in conjunction with the announcement of WWE WrestleFest for the iOS. But, John, we talked about it last week. This week, Retromania comes out. I think it's time for us to throw it on over to our very special interview with Ian Riccoboni, the voice of Retromania. He is a sportscaster and author and the voice of Ring of Honor and Retro Mania Wrestling. Ian Riccoboni, welcome to the Game Marks Podcast. Hey, Johnny. Hey, George. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's kind of surreal. The Ring of Honor thing, it still feels new. I've been there for four years, and that title still feels kind of fresh and new. But to be the voice of a video game is not something I ever envisioned. <laughs> now, you started uh, being a ring announcer for Ring of Honor in what? 2015 yeah i i got my first uh, i did my first match as a commentator in uh, nashville tennessee on uh in january 2015 it was cheeseburger versus chris larusso uh who's a mainstay in the pittsburgh area yeah and uh it was a fun match and um, i just kept showing up uh, and i'd done a f- couple future of honor matches and i did a future of honor event in post-production but yeah it was uh in 2015 um, I kind of been brought into the fold in 2014, so I've been there for a, a bit, but uh, I just kept cra- scratching and clawing until I finally got Kevin Kelly to go to Japan. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe after uh, the world opens up again. There you go. <laughs> so speaking of Japan, actually, New Japan, you were the first non-WWE announcer, along with Kevin Kelly and Colt Cabana, to call an MSG match since, like, 1960. How was that? Right, yeah. Since uh, since Jack Pfeffer promoted Madison Square Garden in 1960, wow. it's it was wild. Um, I went to college at NYU, and that's where I met my wife. And um, so it was kind of sentimental. I had lived in New York City for four years, and it really meant a lot. I could barely afford to go to anything at Madison Square Garden while I was living there, and then to be a part of the attraction that sold out Madison Square Garden was was pretty neat. And that's uh, awesome. Yeah, you, you don't realize how big it is necessarily until you're in the New York Rangers locker room and you're walking the halls. Boo, and you see, sorry. <laughs> I'm a Flyers fan. So I, oh, okay. I, I uh, boo. <laughs> so that doesn't help. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and you, you just see, you see Jimi Hendrix, you see Paul McCartney, you see Bruce Springsteen, uh, Billy Joel, uh, Aretha Franklin, you name it, they're on the walls as you're co- going toward the, the entrance. And that's when it really starts to kick in and you see the, the real famous backdrop, the MSG logo, and it just blows your mind once you're there. So, um, you know, I'm so glad we actually had some internet exclusive matches that were taped beforehand because that allowed me to shake out my nerves and get, you know, kind of fire one out of the chamber before the, you know, the pay-per-view started. So yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. Incredible feeling. And, uh, thank goodness for those, uh, I'm sorry to the the Honor Rumble participants <laughs> for being a little <laughs> a little nervous for that. But then uh, once the pay per view started, uh, Jeff Cobb, Will Ospreay, I think uh, he got he got the best effort. 
Man, that's that awesome. Quite the match to call anyway. So <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> but in uh, 2018, you and Cult won the Aptor Award for Broadcast Team of the Year. That's a pretty awesome accomplishment. Do you think that led to being called for Retrosoft Studios Retro Mania with Cult alongside? I, I think a little bit, yeah. Uh, up until then, um, well, a little bit of an unknown. I'd called all in. Uh, we had we were getting a bigger and bigger audience for Ring of Honor at the time, and we had some high profile matches. But you know, when you get a seal of approval from a guy like Bill Apter, who has been everywhere and done everything, and been part of the wrestling magazine since you know the seventies, it was the uh, Weston uh, Stanley Weston. Um, you know, it just adds an extra level of you know stamp of approval. So for me, that's about when I started to get different offers and things like that. Of hey, would you like to do this? Or even locally, hey, can you can you read you know do this ad read? Can you do something for us? So um, it wasn't it wasn't that long after that actually that. You know, between that and calling Madison Square Garden, where Retrosoft actually reached out and said, hey, we'd like you to be a part of this game. We think you have uh, the right energy, the right enthusiasm to be a part of it. And we'd love to have you. Um, You know, what would it take to do it? And they're a super generous company. Um, They made an offer I couldn't refuse. And uh, I was recording the next day. (laughs) Wow. Wow. That's now. Now, speaking of video games, were you uh, were you gamer growing up did you have like did you play the wrestling video games growing up did you have like a a favorite one yeah my favorite was raw for sega genesis um loves raw you could you be diesel 123 kid luna um you know that was huge for me i had them all before that my brother had the original wrestlemania for nes and then uh about when i could start asking for things maybe four or five years old i got wrestlemania challenge and then steel cage challenge and then super wrestlemania uh, and then Royal Rumble for actually Royal Rumble for SNES played on my brother's system, and then I got Raw on my Genesis that I got for one of one of the Christmases, and it just loved it. Um, I love that they had some of the theme songs. I love that you could use the chairs. Um, again, it was really cool that you could be Luna uh, and then Doink. I remember that was Doink's first game too. And then um, you know they had the arcade style games. I was I love WrestleMania arcade game. I was disappointed by In Your House because you could really only do right. one or two modes. <laughs> yeah, and the matches were just lightning fast. It was way different than WrestleMania. Even though it looked the same, it was way different. My, yeah. <clears throat> so my favorite thing is that, and you know, we, we've talked a lot on our podcast about that series of Raw and, and WrestleMania and Royal Rumble, but it always it always makes me laugh that the last game in that series, everyone always skips because... No, I guess not many people had the Sega CD to play Rage in the Cage. Yeah. Awesome but game. I, I had that so as well. Funny. Yeah. I what's what's unfortunate about that is I got that much later, like 95, 96, <clears throat> after it came out, and Sega CDs weren't very durable. So yeah, no. <laughs> if if you bumped it, the laser reader got all wacky, and that's what happened to mine. So I probably had Rage in the Cage for maybe a month or two, and then the Sega CD went kaput. <laughs> that now, sounds about right. <laughs> now, with Retromania being the official sequel to WrestleFest, did you have experience already with WrestleFest? Like, were you able to find it, you know, in arcades and? Oh yeah, there was there was two places I knew for sure that had it, and whenever we were there, I would I would go go wild and bug my parents for quarters and and things like that. And my dad's very uh, if he's going to the store, he's going for something specific, and we're in and out. And if he was so dilly dally, yeah. <laughs> if we were going to Clover in the Whitehall Mall, uh, we were not stopping at the arcade, even if I begged and begged and begged. But uh, the arcade in the Whitehall Mall had WrestleFest. So when we go there, I would I'd beg and beg and beg. If it was me, my brother, and my mom, and my dad wasn't on that trip, we, we'd usually get to sneak in a game or two. Um, and my brother would usually play NBA Jam. But oh, uh, yeah, they go they hand also, in hand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, later Virtual Cop and Virtual Fighter and, you know, Cruising USA, that four-year period, it was just <laughs> awesome. Uh, but then we would do uh, – we'd also go to the laundromat. And I remember – moving into our first house because we had lived in a, I was born in a trailer and then we bought a, my parents bought a house and we didn't have a, a washer dryer at the time. So we went to the laundromat and wouldn't you know it, there, there, <laughs> of all places, the laundromat had WrestleFest 
And so that was an easy sell because the parents had to get quarters and you had to wait and you had to do something. So that was very, very an easy proposition. And that's actually where I played most of my wrestle fest was at the laundromat in that, you know, 1991, two ish period. That's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the way to do it. You're waiting for laundry. That's so boring. Now when we get to retro, retro mania here, at least we haven't game hasn't been out yet. So we haven't seen anything other than videos, but from what I've seen, you are all over this game. Not only your voice, there are cardboard cutouts of your head in the stands. <laughs> you kind of assume that mean gene role in between matches where he was interviewing the Road Warriors. I see interview sections. Like, how does that feel to be in like the, you just said how you played that game growing up and now you're in the official sequel. It doesn't make sense. Um, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there's like, it, it, it makes no sense. And I have to thank, you know, I have to thank Retrosoft because I just thought, you know, I'd be calling a couple moves and I did about four or five takes of about a hundred lines of dialogue and they have it on a randomizer so that even if I say the same thing, you're not going to hear the same take. You'll hear something slightly different, which is really cool. And that's, I think, how the original WrestleFest was programmed also. But to, there was one point right before they announced me for the game, uh, right before Christmas 2019 where they sent me a shot of me and the road warriors and it was literally me doing the mean gene interviewing the road warriors before the tag the big tag team title match and it was nuts um i got to meet animal at all in and really cool dude and really sad about his passing uh but i mean just to be linked with them in that game um, that's something that's going to live on, you know, for forever. And it'll be something I can show my kids right now <laughs> and just it makes it feel TV. real. Like you really <laughs> interviewed the road warriors, right? <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, there's, you know, Austin Idol, a uh, guy that doesn't get enough credits in the game. Um, the blue meanie who helped break me into wrestling is also in the game, which is kind of an awesome coincidence. Um, Colt, my former partner, uh, you have, uh, Brian Myers, Matt Cardona, which is really neat. Um, they're the only ones where I actually had to re-record commentary for <laughs> because they were late additions to the game. And, you know, Mike from Retrosoft hit me up and said, hey, we got these two guys. Can you can you do something for me? And I'll pay it, blah, blah, blah. I said, don't worry about it. Let me, you know, it, the first round didn't take as long as we thought. So this one's on me. And sure enough, it was, it was Myers and Cardona, which is a, a very pleasant surprise. Yeah, that's right. And uh, are you are you a major, Mark? Oh, sure am. Yeah. I think, I think oh, I've I, seen you I, around the Facebook group, right? <laughs> okay. They've cost, yeah. they've cost me a lot of money. I'll, oh, yeah, um, you and me both. Just, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> because of them, I now own multiple Mint on Card LJN figures, which oh, yeah. I had no appetite for from the years 1987 through 2019. And then all of a sudden, one day, the one-man gang just shows up on my doorstep, and Macho Man shows up on my doorstep. <laughs> it's weird how that happens. Yep. They just, you just, he's like a little, a little birdie in your ear. You're just like, oh, you found these figures, you should buy them. And then suddenly, they're there. I don't know how that happens. And I wish it's like that GameStop stock, man. I wish I would have been. I wish I would have fed that impulse just a little sooner because the yep. prices, the the prices have all gone astronomically high. Yeah. Uh, it's a seller's market right now, and you know, I. I'm going to keep these forever. I mean, these are, these are cool. They sit on the mantle. Um, you know, as a kid, I came, I grew up just at the tail end of the LJNs. I had the black cards in package uh, when I was a kid. And obviously you, when you're a kid, you take them out and play, I with, say them. You play with them. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. I mean, come on. Yeah. And somehow Haku's like still in near mint condition, which blows my good. mind. Yeah. <laughs> but I just think back to, oh my God, this big boss man that I have. Um, with the nightstick is a $300 figure outside the package. But man, if I would have just forgot about him in a closet somewhere, he's now a, a $10,000. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Crazy. All right. So let's veer off video games for a second. I was going to wait to say this, but you have a micro brawler too. So you're in a video game and you're a micro brawler. Like what else could you possibly want? <laughs> <laughs> you're just checking things off the bucket list here. Of <laughs> it's, and you know what? That's the craziest thing because I feel like I'm still relatively anonymous in wrestling um you know there's been there's been times where my contract has been up at ring of honor and kind of quietly i resign and it's not a big deal and it's great and that's where i want to be uh so i haven't had that kind of high profile moment maybe all in was or maybe madison square garden 
Um, but for somebody that, you know, commentators that are mostly in the background, it's a really cool feeling. I mean, there's not very many of us that get um, an action figure or even are featured in a video game. You know, Michael Cole has been the consistent voice of the WWE games now for almost 20 years and yeah. deservedly so. So, um, you know, and Jim Ross is the only other commentator with a micro brawler. And again, deservedly so. Uh, but it's just, I feel very grateful. It's been something that I didn't think was possible. Um, you know, when you start out and you just want to do, okay, I want to do one dark match. I want to do commentary for one dark match. Okay, I want to do one uh, internet match. Okay, great. And now my next goal is TV. Then the next goal is, okay, one pay-per-view match. And then it's, you just, you get better and better. If, you, if you're really working hard at it, you get better and better. And you just keep track of those goals. And the other stuff just kind of shows up after a while, but it's it's thrilling. There's this weird kind of like, like pride because it's not even something that I anticipated, but I have people from high school reaching out and say, Hey, I think I saw you in a video game commercial. I think, <laughs> I think I saw you in an advertisement that popped up on Facebook or I, are you, do you really have an action figure? That's really cool. Or somebody will send me a picture that I haven't talked to in uh, 10 years that it's like, Hey, I, I bought this action figure. It's going to Bradbury Sullivan community center. And great. Thank you. Um, so it's really neat to hear, just hear from different people who, uh, you know, have just been kind of following along and, um, you know, I just, it's, I'm at a loss for words sometimes because when I started out, I was 27 and I had a little bit of a background on TV, not much. I'd done a, a cable show where I interviewed, uh, some Phillies prospects and some famous Phillies fans. And, um, just, I had a couple of the right people just take chances on me and, has worked really hard so that anytime I got a new chance, I was able to, to deliver. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Now, Plus you were, we, go ahead. I was going to say, now we talked about earlier on, like, you know, you just mentioned that Michael Cole has been the voice of the WWE games. And obviously over the course of all of the years that commentary has been in video games, you know, there are some, I, the, 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 if you ever played Warzone, for the N64, yes. the, the off the rope against the rope comes to mind where if as many times as you run into the ropes, that's how many times you're going to hear that. Are there any like <laughs> corny or cheesy or like any standout like commentary lines from video games in your head that you just like, you know, think of this game and this is the first line that comes to my mind. Or any you try to create yourself now that you're in a video game. Yeah, so I, I appreciate a Retrosoft because I don't have many sayings, but they, they asked me to say them, which was cool. Um, I stole Larry Beal's Aloha Means Goodbye on Jeff Cobb's Tour of the Islands. And Larry Beal was a sports center anchor. And, you know, they picked up on it and they said, hey, can you say this? And it's not trademarked. So I went with it. And uh, so now it's in the video game. Um, there's that. There's a happy wrestling, my sign off. There's a couple different things um, that I, I say regularly. But my favorite by far is Boom Shakalaka. And that's, I mean, that's the one that, you know, you can say that to anybody between, I think, 28 and 48 years old, and they, they can tell exactly you ex exactly where it came <laughs> from. And, uh, or he's, he's heating up, he's on fire, um, you know, those kind of things. And I think that's the impact of, of good commentary, um, games that are engaging, um, they kind of, they pick their spots, you know, they, they may do with what they have. There's a really interesting book on NBA Jam, and I think it was only, $4.99 or $9.99 um, on Kindle. And I read it and they talked about the process of the commentary and they just want to kind of minimalist, you know, minimalist interaction and uh, just with some, some buzzwords and some catchphrases. And I, with Retrosoft, that's what we tried to do. Um, that's what the production was. Again, I have, I have a hundred phrases, but if you've watched some of the videos and the developers vlogs, they don't have me programmed at every movement or every second. And you know, that's, I think that's the key to both a good announcer and a good video game is, you know, pick your spots and let the, let what's in front of you tell the story. That's yeah. And from what I heard, it all, I, I like exactly what you said. I kind of noticed that it wasn't there except for like the big moments. And it did have that music in the background, which was cool because you didn't have that Michael Cole every second, just saying the repeated lines over and over again. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I mean, they that's such an arduous job too. I I've listened to Tony Schiavone's podcast where he talks about doing the WCW mayhem game. And 
he said he was there for, I think, a couple days. And wow. they, were, they were trying to do their best because they had this new technology. They had a disc, they had a compact disc. And, um, you know, they could fit a lot more audio than they used to. But ultimately, in the end, that one turned out a little bit better than, than Warzone. But um, it's still, if you play enough of it, you, <laughs> I love Tony. Yeah. He's one of my favorite people. <laughs> but you hear a lot of, of Tony in that game. <laughs> You certainly do. <laughs> um, so working with like Kevin Kelly and Colt Cabana, anything crazy stand out? Any, uh, any Colt Cabana stories? Just what's it like working with him? Yeah, Colt, Colt's a lot of fun. Um, you know, right now Capri, uh, Caprice is my, my permanent partner these days. But you know, working with Colt, he, the best thing he ever did for me is I clammed up pretty hard. Um, the first pay-per-view we called together. And they put me right in the middle and Kevin said, hey, if, if Ian's going to take over for me, we're going to we got to make it look like Ian's the leader here. You got to put him in the middle. And so I was in the middle to kick off the pay-per-view and then throughout the pay-per-view. And I think Cole could tell that I literally was not breathing as the screen went black <laughs> as we were going into the, the FBI piracy warning. And uh, Cole, Cole put his hand on me, started rubbing my shoulders and said, you're going to be all right, kid. And then give me a nice big pat on the back, which kickstarted my oxygen. <laughs> which, <laughs> okay, up a little. Which, which brought me back to life and we were off to the races. And, uh, you know, one of the best things about traveling with Colt when we used to travel together was we were roommates. Um, I don't think I've ever said this part publicly. I've said it on Twitter a couple times maybe, but I am a bad sleepwalker. And so it, there'd be times where I would get up out of bed and I would walk toward the hotel window and I would just start banging on the window thinking I was in some sort of dream or some sort. And he would gently, he would calmly wake up, gently guide me back to my bed. <laughs> yeah. Cause you gotta, you gotta play those situations. Cool. Like you, you can't, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, and another time I had got up, I, apparently it took a lap around the, the hotel room and then tried to climb into his bed. And he, again, gently, <laughs> <laughs> gently just guided me back to my bed. Uh, but th- that's probably the craziest thing. Um, Colt and I had a lot of good times together. Uh, we traveled together in the same cars a lot. Um, you know, one of my, a lot of my favorite times in wrestling are with Colt, um, you know, the late nights eating Denny's afterwards, um, coming back from, from Toronto into Buffalo to do those loops, uh, you know, just hanging out together. When we did the, uh, one of the global wars tours with new Japan, uh, he and I, he challenged me to spend as little money as possible. And it actually turned out to be really fun because he noticed that I spend money on energy drinks and coffee and all kinds of stuff. And so I bought like a dozen bagels. I bought a thing of peanut butter and uh, we were trying to out cheap each other. <laughs> <on the road. laughs> and actually, again, it turned out really, really fun. Uh, we were trying to find like the cheapest stuff. It also led to me being in a, in a uh, grocery store with Minoru Suzuki and I don't speak any Japanese. Um, Minoru, I don't know, speaks a whole lot of English. But just trying to help him find different things in the grocery store was quite an experience. <laughs> that's awesome. That's that's so awesome. <laughs> <sighs> well, I don't know. Johnny, do you have any other questions for, for Ian? I mean, I think we covered a lot of stuff here. We don't want to keep you too long. Um where can we find you? Plug your stuff. Tell us everything. Saying, yeah, I think we yeah. do a lot of charity work too, right? Plug everything. Yeah, I do. Um, so micro brawlers, I still limited quantities available. There's less than three dozen left. They're on ROHwrestling.com. Uh, they sold out at Pro Wrestling Tees. They sold out on my website, but there's some hidden in the corner of the universe at ROHwrestling.com. And I point people there because there's still some rare ones that go for like 20 to $40 on eBay. They're still available for $9.99 over there. And when you're over there, you can check out the latest episode of Ring of Honor. You'll see me and Caprice and uh, awesome wrestling. Um, Ian Riccoboni on all the social medias. Uh, there you'll find, I do a podcast with Kerry Silken called Last Stop Penn Station that details mostly his life. It's less a wrestling podcast and more about him getting in and out of different jams in the 70s and 80s in New York. <laughs> so that's a lot that's of cool. fun. And uh, yeah, and right now I'm doing cameos. So uh, I'm doing cameos, cameo.com slash Ian Riccoboni. Uh, like the micro brawler, I, all the proceeds go to Bradbury Sullivan LGBT Community Center in Allentown, my hometown. And uh, it's a real great organization, especially during the pandemic. 
Um, you know, they're supporting a small staff that helps LGBT youth and adults um, with legal things, with uh, art. They have um, virtual art festivals. They have poetry contests. They have uh, all any any kind of support you may need if you're LGBTQ in Allentown. That's a great place to go that can uh, be of support. And I uh, just love working with them. That's where the proceeds for the micro brawlers go to. And that's where the proceeds for the cameo goes. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We can't wait to hear your voice on Retro Mania Wrestling. And just thank you for being on the Game Marks podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me, Johnny and George. Appreciate it. And uh, pick up the game February 26th. That's my, my daughter's birthday. It's a lucky day for me. Perfect. So, oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, appreciate you having me. Thank you All so right, much, cool. man. We really do appreciate it. Now, that may be one of the easiest interviews that we have ever done, mainly just because Ian is an awesome guy. Um, love everything that we talked about. Super, super cool to get his insight just on his involvement in the game, in wrestling as a whole. Um, and in some charity work. I was just going to say, now, Johnny, in addition to, to that, uh, we also made a point while we were on the call with Ian to buy his micro brawlers. And uh, I believe you have some exciting news about the micro brawler. So I purchased two of the micro brawlers, one for myself and one to give away right now so all you have to do is subscribe to us on youtube send us the proof in a tweet with the hashtag retro gmp and we will pick a winner to get the ian riccoboni micro brawler thank you once again to ian for taking time out of his busy schedule to come and sit down with us um we we gave him a open offer for him to come back on the podcast all he has to do is tell us what game he wants to play and uh we would be happy to sit down and break down a whole game with ian yeah but um also did you know did you know with the release of the game on the ios devices wwe wrestlefest was announced to hit a variety of platforms by the end of 2012 including xbox live PlayStation Network, Android, and PC, but these versions were eventually canceled. Did you know the DLC packs cost 99 cents and consist of five superstars and one arena each? Did you know after numerous delays it was announced that THQ was going to file for bankruptcy and all mention of this game have disappeared, and the only one to see release was the iOS version and has since been pulled from the App Store? Oh man. So I actually had a few like listeners ask about this game, like how they can get it, and it's impossible. Like you said, um kinda gotta know where to look or you have to have it downloaded on like an old device like we did. And if you want it now, <laughs> you're not gonna find it. Stick with uh retro yeah. retro mania wrestling. I say Google's your friend. Um you can you can pretty much find anything on the internet. Uh but yeah, we uh for for legal reasons we are not able to directly tell you where to go and how to download this. But Google is your friend is all I'm going to say. But, you know, John, we talked a lot about this game and even though even though it's a mobile game, it's a lot of heavy lifting. So, I'm getting kind of tired. I think we need some some R&R. So, would you mind taking us through some ratings and reviews? Now, since this is removed from the App Store, we can't see the actual Rating and uh, the star rating and all that, but Metacritic overall with a 57%. App Safari gave this a 90%. Touch Gen and Impulse Gamer gave it a 70%. And Pocket Gamer gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Now, with all those ratings, it's time for the most important rating. Because right now, George, it's time to rate the games. The game! So, George Feast, we all love the original WWF WrestleFest, but WWE WrestleFest for the iOS. Will you play it forever? Woo! Or future endeavor? You're fired! It's going to be a hard no for me. This is uh, pretty much an instant future endeavor for me. Yeah, that's going to be a no for me, dog. You're fired! 
that th- this game missed the mark and then some. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, we haven't had a, a double future in a while. I think this is a good game to bring it back. Yeah, and you know what? I will say this. This being through THQ just makes it even more heartbreaking because you look at the game and you're like, okay, the aesthetic's a little different. Uh, the animations for the moves and stuff, you're like, wow, this really looks like a true-to-form arcade game. You're like, th- th- this has so much promise. And then you play it. And it's just it's it's bad. Uh, it's just not there. Um, do you want to know? It's just an. Do you want to know the last game we double future endeavored? Because that will yes, I would love to. that will paint the picture of where this game fits. And that last game was WCW Nitro for the PlayStation. Ah, yes, I would say I I, I agree with that. <laughs> okay. I agree with that as well. <laughs> I'm sticking with that rating too. Now, what do you say we go over our weekly tournament, Clash at the Feast? all right so check out youtube.com slash game marks podcast for this week's clash at the feast it was a special edition since we don't actually we weren't actually able to play wrestle fest now last week we played wwf wrestlemania challenge and the matches were as follows Match number one was Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. I was Hogan. George was Andre. Then I chose Warrior and Hogan versus George's big boss man and Macho King. And then I chose yourself, Andre the Giant, and Brutus the Barber Beefcake. And George chose Rick Rude, Jim Duggan, and Hulk Hogan. George, do you want to say the outcome of all of those games for me? Uh, yeah, I, um... Your winner... Johnny Clash. I said get used to it. Play my music. All right, but listen here, John. I'm issuing a challenge right now. Being that we had a hiccup. That this is a very old, very broken iOS game. I want to challenge you this week, but this is not going to be normal. Let's go play Fire Pro, and then Johnny complains because it's Fire Pro. I want George Feast versus Johnny Clash, GMP sixty four. Ooh, ooh! So like the two actual. Ooh, okay, okay. You're on. That's how we're going to settle February because right now I'm up two to one. So if you win that, we're going to have to figure out a tiebreaker. Ooh, maybe that's a tiebreaker for the King of the Ring event. Oh, okay. Now, we did our deep dive. We did our question of the week. We did our ratings and reviews. We had our great interview with Ian Riccoboni. George, what are we playing next week? Oh, boy. I I hate when it starts like that. All right, Johnny. Well, you know, we, we play a lot of games here, and sometimes we play the games that are very popular in America. Sometimes we play the games that are very popular overseas. And then sometimes we play games that I've never even heard of. And next week, that's what we're playing. Because next week, we are playing an SNES game called Bisoju Wrestling History. Okay, I just looked it up. And George, you see what I'm doing here? You see, what is this? That's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's you stirring a pot. This is me mixing up some cement. All right. Well, apparently everyone's getting cement next week. We're dishing but, it uh, out. I uh, I'm not ready for this. I'm sure John's gonna make this as uncomfortable as possible. And for some odd reason, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> but that is gonna do it for us this week on the Game Marks Podcast. Please check out our Pro Wrestling Tees store at prowrestlingtees.com slash Game Marks Pod. It is the best way besides listening to support the podcast. And be sure to follow us on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. Leave us a review and a rating on Apple Podcasts and subscribe wherever great podcasts can be found and do not forget 200 followers twitch.tv slash game marks pod make us do that bret hart career retrospect thanks for hanging out with us this week wash your hands wear your mask social distance be safe johnny boy do your thing game over 
make sure you buy Retro Mania Wrestling and let us know how you like it. Marks. Game Marks Podcast, put them on the radar. Play a rare game, second Saturday, no game shard. Johnny and George work hard and they play hard. Future Endeavor games and put them in the graveyard. From the deep dive to the clash at the feast. How can I get more? That's question of the week. Follow on Twitch, there's nothing that they won't play. Game Marks Podcast every single Monday.